Chapter 15 of Danger in Deep Space This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Danger in Deep Space by Kerry Rockwell Narrated by Sam Holloway Chapter 15 Well, I'll be a stargazing lunatic exclaimed Roger a few minutes later. You really think that you can blast this satellite out of its orbit? Not only that, Manning, said Connell with a smile, but I might be able to get it back to our sun faster than we could get back ourselves. Why, that would be the biggest project ever attempted by man, sir, said Tom. You'd be transporting an entire satellite from one star system to another. That's right, Corbett, said Connell. I've just finished talking to Space Academy and they've given me permission to do anything I think necessary to accomplish just that. Now, pay close attention to me, all of you. We haven't much time. Tom, Roger, Astro, Alfie, and Mr. Shinny gathered in a close circle around the Major on the control deck of the Polaris, and watched him as he drew several rough diagrams on a piece of paper. Getting the satellite back is the trickiest part of the whole operation. Astro, are you sure you made a correct estimate on the amount of reactant fuel in the Space Devil? Yes, sir, replied Astro. I checked it four times, and Mr. Shinny checked it too. All right, then. Listen, said Connell. I've given the satellite a name. From now on, we call it Junior. And this will be known as Junior's Pitch. I've explained how Junior is a captive satellite revolving around Tara, the same way our moon revolves around Earth. We have two problems. One is to blast it out of Tyra's grip, and the other is to take advantage of Tyra's orbital speed around its sun, Alpha Centauri, and Junior's orbital speed around Tyra. We've got to combine the velocities of the orbits, so that when we do spring Junior loose, he'll gain in speed. But how do we get the orbital speeds to help us, Major? asked Alfie. His glasses had slipped to the very end of his nose. If you'd give the Major a chance, he'd tell you, Big Brain drawled roger alfie gave roger a withering look and turned back to the major do you remember when you were kids and tied a rock on the end of a rope and then swung it around your head asked connell sure sort of like a slingshot said astro that's right astro said connell and if you released the rope the rock would fly in the direction it was headed when you let go i get it cried tom excitedly the gravity of tara is the rope holding junior uh, he fumbled, making it swing round. And the reactant power of the space devil, placed in the right spot, would be the trigger to make it let go, commented Roger. It's as simple as that, boys, said Connell with a smile. But how in the blazing beams of the sun are you going to stop that blasted thing when you get it rolling? asked Chinny. The chances of Junior hitting anything on the way home are so small it doesn't present a problem. So we just aim Junior for our solar system. Later on, arrangements can be made to steer it into an orbit around our sun. You know, wheezed Chinny, his merry eyes twinkling. That sounds pretty neat. It is, replied Connell. He leaned against the control board desktop and folded his arms across his massive chest. He looked at each of the cadets and Chinny a long time before speaking. Finally, he stepped forward and stood among them turning now and then to speak directly to each of them. We have only four days, five hours and some minutes to pull Junior out of Tara's grip, and later the grip of Alpha Centauri. You boys will have to work as you've never worked before. You'll do things you never dreamed you could do. You'll work until your brains ache and your bodies scream. But when you've finished, you will have accomplished one of man's greatest challenges. You're going to do all this because I know you can, and I'm going to see that you do. Is that clear? There was a barely audible, yes, yes sir. sir, from the cadets. The six of us, working together, are going to send a hunk of copper 15 miles in diameter, hurtling through 23 million, million miles of space. So let's get that ball rolling right now with major connell roaring pleading and blasting four young cadets and a derelict spaceman began the monumental task of assembling the massive information necessary for the satellite's big push through space 
During the three days that their project had been underway, Tom, Roger, Astro, Alfie and Mr Shinny worked, as Major Connell promised, as they had never worked before. Late in the afternoon of the third day, Connell stepped through the hatch of the control deck where Tom was busy over a table of ratios for balancing the amount of thrust from each of the reactant power units. The power units were to give Junior its initial thrust out of the gravity of Tara. Oh well, Corbett, asked Connell. How are you making out with the ratios? I finished them, sir, replied Tom, looking up at the Major. His face was drawn, his eyes red from lack of sleep. But I just can't seem to get a time for escaping the orbit on a true tangent. Have you tried making an adjustment for the overall pull of both components? Asked Connell. That of Tara and of Alpha Centauri on Junior. He picked up the paper Tom had been working on and glanced over the figures. Yes, sir, replied Tom. But I still can't seem to make it come out right. You'll get it, Tom, said Connell. Go over it again. But remember, time's running out. Just one day and about twenty hours left. Connell's voice was friendly, more friendly than at at any time Tom could remember. He smiled, and taking a fresh sheet of paper, he began the complicated calculations of escape time all over again. Connell slipped out of the control room and went below to the power deck, where Astro and Mr Shinny had been working without sleep for over fifty hours. When Connell slipped into the room, he found the two men puzzling over a drawing board. What seems to be the trouble, Astro? asked Connell. Astro turned, startled. We've tried building the lead baffle for the reactant units five times now, sir, said Astro. We're having a hard time getting the correct amount of reactant power we need in a unit this small. Maybe you're trying to make it too small, Astro, commented Connell, looking over the drawing. Remember, this unit has but one job, to start the reaction. When the reaction fuel gets hot enough, it'll start a reaction on the copper and junior and sustain itself. Try a smaller amount of the reactant. But whatever you do, keep working! Only a day and a few hours left! Connell looked at Shinny. Keep him working, Mr. Shinny, he ordered. I know he can do it. Just keep him going! Shinny grinned and nodded. I'll try, sir, said Astro, shaking his head. But I won't guarantee it. Connell cut him off with a roar. Can't it, Astro! I don't want your guarantee! I want that unit! Now! Build it! Hour after hour, the cadets racked their brains for what seemed like impossible answers to an impossible task. Working until their eyes closed fast shut, they would lie down right where they were, power deck, control deck or radar bridge, and sleep. They would awake, still groggy, drink hot tea, eat cold sandwiches, and continue their struggle with time and astrophysics. One by one, the problems were solved and set aside for newer ones that arose on the way. Each cadet worked in his particular field, and all of their information was assembled and coordinated by Major Connell. More than once, Connell had found the clever minds of his cadets reaching for answers to questions he knew would have troubled the professors back at Space Academy. Connell, his eye on the clock, his sharp tongue lashing out when he thought detected unclear thinking, raced from one department to another while the incessant work continued. On the morning of the fourth day, he walked into the radar bridge where Roger and Alfred had been working steadily for 72 hours on an electronic fuse to trigger the reactant units. There you are, Skipper, said Roger. The fuse is all yours, delivered 12 hours ahead of time. Good work, Roger. You too, Alfie. Excellent, said Connell, his eyes appraising the fuse. Ah, uh, that's nothing, Skipper, said Roger with a smile. Anyone could have done it with Alfie here to help. He's got a brain like a calculator. Now, I want to see how smart you two really are, said Connell. Huh? asked Roger stupidly. Alfred slumped to the deck, holding his head in his hands. I want a communications unit, said Connell, that can send out a constant beam, a signal Space Academy can pick up to follow Junior in transit back to Earth. In twelve hours? exploded Roger. Impossible, Skipper. Cadet Manning! roared Connell. I don't want your opinion! I asked for that unit! But one day, sir, said Roger. Not even a day, twelve hours. I can't, sir. I'm sorry. I'm so tired I can't see straight. Alfie let out a low moan. Connell studied the two cadets. He was aware that he'd already asked them to do the impossible, and they had done it, and they deserved to be let alone. But Major Connell wasn't himself unless he had given every ounce of energy he had left, or the energy left in those around him. He patted Roger on the shoulder and spoke softly. 
Roger, did I ever tell you that I think you have one of the finest brains for electronics I've ever seen? And that Alfie is sure to have a brilliant future in astrophysics. Roger stammered. Why, uh, thank you, sir. Alfie looked up at Connell and then struggled to his feet. You know, Roger, he said haltingly, if we took that unit we came out here to test, you know, the transmitter unit. Roger cut him off. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. We could borrow some of the reaction mass that Astro got out of the Space Devil and use that as a power source. Connell backed away from the two cadets and tiptoed off to the bridge. He smiled to himself. He was going to win his race with time yet, and he was going to do it because he had learned long before that you could only push a man so far. Then you had to sit down, pat him on the back, tell him how smart he was, and he would push himself. Connell almost laughed out loud. Six hours later, Connell sat in his quarters puzzling over one of the many minor problems of Junior's pitch when he heard footsteps behind him. He turned. Astro, Tom, Roger, Alfie and Shinny walked silently into the room. Connell stared. What? what is it? He demanded. We're finished, sir, said Tom, simply. Finished? Exploded Connell. You mean? That's what he means, Skipper, said Shinny. His eyes were bloodshot for want of sleep, but there was a merry twinkle left tugging at the corners. Everything? asked Connell. Everything, sir, said Roger. The power units are built and the fuses installed. All it needs is to be set. Tom's worked out the ratios and the amount of reactant fuel needed in each unit for escape tangent. The escape time, combining orbital speeds of Tara and Junior, are completed and we have six hours and 55 minutes before blast-off. He turned and rumpled Alfie's hair. Alfie and I have completed the communications unit and have tested it. Junior is ready to get his big kick in the pants. Connell stood up. He was speechless. It was almost too much to believe. Get below! He roared. And go to sleep! If I catch one of you awake in five minutes, I'll log you fifty demerits. The tired workers grinned back at their commander. I'll get everything set, said Connell, and wake you up an hour before we have to get things ready. Now hit the sack! Their grins spreading even wider on their haggard faces, they turned away. Connell stepped to the desk on the control deck and wrote across the face of the logbook page. October 2nd, 2353. Space Cadets Corbett, Manning, Astro, and Higgins, and ex-enlisted spaceman Nicholas Shinney completed this day all preparation for Operation Junior's Pitch. By authority vested in me as senior officer, Solar Guard, I hereby recommend official commendation of well done to the above-mentioned spaceman and that all honours pursuant to that commendation be officially bestowed on them. Signed, Colonel Major S.O.S.G. He closed the book and wiped the corners of his eyes with the back of his hand. End of chapter 15